This is a brand new Flutter app that I just created. It's the default scaffold that gives you a counter and a button that you can press to increment the counter. But there's something wrong with it. And it's not quite the text. The button seems to work. See, we increment. So what's the issue? Oh, my phone is set to French. But the text that we're seeing here is in English. Wouldn't it be great if this was French? Let's fix that. So unfortunately, this is a bit of a laborious process to get started with, but once you get started, it's not that bad. So what we can do is we can go to our pub spec, and we have a section here for our dependencies. We have Flutter, and we have our SDK set to Flutter. So just under this, we want to add two things. We're going to add Flutter localizations, and we're going to set this to the SDK, uh, the Flutter SDK. And then we want to add INTL any. So this is going to be our internationalization. Okay, so if we save this, we can run our pub git. Now we need to go back to our main.dart and we're going to scroll up to the top. We're going to add a new import. Import package flutter localizations slash flutter localizations.dart. Okay. We need to add something to our material app. So let's find our material app. Okay, there it is. And what we're going to add is um, this localizations delegates. And this takes in an array. So we're going to add a global material localizations delegate. You don't need this if you're not using material, but let's be real. You're using Flutter, so you're probably using material. You need the widgets delegate. And then if you are using any Cupertino stuff, you need the Cupertino delegate. Now we need to add one more property here. We want to show the locales that we support. So English is my primary language, so we'll support English, but let's also support French. You can use the full language code country code. I'm just using the language code here. Okay, now that we've done this, anything provided by a material widget, uh, the Flutter widget system, or the Cupertino widgets will automatically localize itself. So confirmation dialogues will be localized and, and all that type of stuff. We don't have any of that here. So we need to do custom localization as well. And the way that we handle custom localization is pretty straightforward. We already added the INTL library. We're going to add another property to our pub spec. So if we go to our pub spec, and then under Flutter, we want to set generate true. And this will tell Flutter to generate our localizations whenever we build our application. And now we're going to add a new file to the root of our Flutter project. Uh, this is going to be called l10n.yaml. l10n is a shortening for the word localization, if you're unfamiliar with it. We're going to add a couple properties here. The first one is we're going to add an ARB directory. I'm going to use lib l10n. We're going to add a template ARB file. So this is the primary language that you're supporting. It doesn't have to be, but this is what it's going to default to. In my case, English is what I want to use. And then I want to create an output localization file. And this we'll, we're going to call it app localizations.dart. Let's go ahead and create this file, this app en ARB. So we know that it needs to be in lib l10n. So we have lib l10n, and then we want to create a new file called app en arb. Arb files are a little interesting. They look something like this. Uh, it's it's basically JSON. It's a little different, but it's it's basically JSON. And now that we've specified our locale, we can specify any translatable text uh, that we want to include. So let's take a look at this. We have a couple things. We have Flutter demo homepage. You may want to translate this. You may not. This is usually your app title, and titles are proper nouns, so sometimes they may translate, sometimes they may not. But we definitely want to translate this. You have pushed the button this many times. We could say something like button message. You have pushed the button this many times. Um, and now, if we want to use this, we can go back to our application, our actual Dart code. 
So now we need to add our app localizations to our project. But before we do that, we need to generate them. So let's go ahead and run our application one time, just doing a full restart so that our file gets generated. Okay, now we should be able to import package flutter gen gen l10n app localizations dot dart looking good and now we can add this localization delegate so it'd be app localizations dot delegate there's some cleanup we could do here by like making this const those blue lines kind of agitate me we can make this const as well one more thing under supported locales, we hard coded these values, but we can actually get the supported locales from app localizations dot supported locales. Um, and then this is an array or a list, so we don't need to wrap it in a list. Now we can actually translate. So if we come down to this text right here that says you've pushed the button this many times, app localizations dot of context, dot button message and this can't be a const anymore small change to make our app localizations of context are null so and we're null checking that here let's just go ahead and do a full restart and see how things work okay so we've restarted our application you can see you've pushed the button this many times we're good to go so now we can go in and create our french file i'm going to create one called app underscore fr for french.arb and I'm gonna just copy and paste the English ARB and change this value from EN to FR. And then we need to translate our button message, right? So this would be something like vous avez appuyé le fois sur le bouton. And now I'm gonna go ahead and terminate my application and start it one more time to trigger the generation. And now you can see that our text is in French. Uh, this is neat, but what if we wanted to change one of the values that's passed into this, like maybe make something dynamic? So there's a way to do that as well. Uh, so maybe if we wanted to have this all be in line instead of having the counter be a separate text object, we can handle that like so. Uh, so we can add counter to our app ENARB. And then we need to add at button message. And this is essentially metadata for that matching key. So uh, we're, we're fixing this error message as we go. So we can have a description um, shows how many times a button has been pressed. Uh, we can add placeholders. So in our case, we have counter and we have a type, which is string. Um, does it need to be string? It technically is an int, not a string. So we can pass that in. And if we wanna add a description, we can here. This is, these descriptions are really, they're not gonna show up in your application. Uh, to, to my knowledge, you might actually be able to make those show up somehow, but I've not been able to, and I have no interest in it. But these descriptions are here to help you or your translators figure out exactly what the context is for the thing that you're translating. So the amount of times a button has been pressed. Okay, so this is gonna cause a couple of fun little changes. So the first one is we need to go into our uh, French file. And paste this. We can keep this in English because again, this is for your translators, uh, but we do need to add this new placeholder. So we're gonna add it right here. And anything in the placeholders will get substituted out. When Dart builds this out, they will build parameters for your methods on the localization object. You'll kind of see how that fits together in just a second. Okay, so we can rebuild our application once more to trigger our code generation. Yeah, and you can see our first error message, right? So string function int can't be assigned to the parameter type string. Well, that's because we need to pass in our counter. So if we pass in our counter object here and then try this one more time, you can see that our counter is added to the end. We still have that existing one right here, the, the previous one. So let's go ahead and remove that. Perfect, and now we can see that this works as we would expect. 
So why would we pass the value to this translation object instead of just keeping it in line like we had originally? It may be more grammatically correct in certain languages to change the order of the words. So the counter may not always be at the end. And with us taking this model, if we wanted to, we could move the counter uh, to over here or something. That isn't exactly what we'd want to do in French, but just providing an example. So you get extra flexibility when you pass the values to your translation object as well, and your translators can organize things differently. Okay, there's a little bit more to uh, localization than just what you've seen here, but this should be enough of the basics to get you started. If you want to find more, you can always Google Flutter localization, and I'm sure you can find plenty of great tips to help you make sure that you're localizing everything properly. You can see here that they have different formats for numbers as well, and it's, it's plenty of really helpful things, but it would take a very long time to talk through all of those. So I'm gonna just stop with what we have today and fix my issue with our new Flutter application. Hope you learned something, and if you have, let me know what you learned in the comments below. Thanks, and have a great day.